hey, it's Sol. And to my direction over here, there's going to be some B-roll. And, and don't forget to use the navigation either if it is uh, at, at all effective. So today I want to start a discussion. I'm going to start a conversation about crafting in the upcoming Dragonflight expansion. Uh, for the sake of our own sanity, this is going to come in separate videos so as to not overwhelm you with too much information, even though uh, right now I most certainly will overwhelm you with like vague, unconfirmed, and not at all final information. Uh, and obviously I'm going to get ranting here, so I, I apologize in advance that I say ranting anyway. Here I'm going to cover the meaning of specializations and how players' responses are going to be different than expansions past. Later in a separate video, I'm going to speculate on, I guess, who are going to be the winning, the, 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 the winners and the winnerers, maybe the winningest professions for the sake of you gold chasers out there. Now, this is going to require some decent understanding of how the systems in Dragonflight are going to work, which is why this video is coming uh, first. And, you, and if you haven't already, I've done previews of every profession in Dragonflight. Uh, so as said, these talks are based on the Dragonflight beta and are thus highly speculative. The intent is not exactly to give you a plan of action, but to just start giving you this sense of familiarity. So come at this content with an open mind, you know, like the video, subscribe for more content, and, and let's go. Professions in World of Warcraft's history have been uh, pretty straightforward. Like, you know, you, you do a few clicks and then you learn the profession. And once you learn a recipe, you can then make whatever it is as long as you have the materials. And in some cases, uh, you need to be at the, the proper work table or workstation or whatever. Learning recipes happened in various ways, from trainers to rep vendors to like just drops and more. What some, not all, but what some folks really liked about professions were profession specializations. Like just look at the classic era with, oh gosh, dragon scale le uh, leatherworking. Uh, or like, like, what kind of flavor were you in the Burning Crusade as a cloth person? Were you moon cloth? Were you shadow weave or were you you know, the other one. And let's not forget engineers, like who went goblin engineering and who went gnomish? I happen to go goblin. Why? Racism. Yeah, just ra racism. Anyway, you make choices, right? From your class, to your race, to your faction, to your covenant, your profession, and your profession specialization. Those were impactful choices with consequences and throughout World of Warcraft's history, the team recreated that sense of choice in all sorts of ways, but the choices are still very easy to understand. All right, here's, here's a more recent example of profession choice and specialization with Shadowlands. Armor crafting professions, they made huge bank creating uh, those legendary reagents. Using tons of resources and capital, those players, they, you know, they grinded away at crafting these low level pieces so that way they can, you know, skill up and then create higher level pieces. Players then chose what they thought would be the most profitable pieces to make, and if their revenue allowed it, and the demand was there, then they leveled up all the other ranks in their professions. Cool. It was like specializing, right? But it was a little bit different. And unfortunately, people with, you know, who already had a lot of time and or money, they were able to power level their specializations and, you know, pretty much have this little monopoly. They had this corner of the market. Now, it wasn't the perfect system, but still it was it was straightforward and easy to understand. Now, let's kind of take a closer look into what made a legendary in Shadowlands when we only consider the profession side of things. Like the base piece, it needed ingots, and that was made out of ore that was gathered by a miner. The bars, they needed an enchanter to, to you know, enchant it. Uh, to increase its item level, you needed, you know, some recipe, but you, you basically just needed some additional mining resources. Now, now, that covers the base piece, but to make it into a legendary, you needed two missives, which were made by scribes, using materials gathered by herbalists. So that's, like, four or five professions contributing their expertise, and I find it pretty cool that high level crafts like these can be you know a little bit more involved it's also still pretty binary still like all you need are the materials and then a crafter who had the recipe to make them the blacksmith needed to specialize in like that particular recipe if they wanted to make it at that elevated item level 
It's not in depth, but it's still you know, perfectly functional. If Shadowlands required a sort of specialization in the last steps of crafting legendaries, by comparison, Dragonflight professions offer specializations for virtually every stage of production, including gathering the materials themselves. Specializations are a profession progression path that can determine what recipes you have access to, the quality of the materials that you gather, and the quality of goods that you can make. Now, in the before times, as I mentioned, you know, you had goblin and gnomish engineering, but in Dragonflight, you can choose between all sorts of multiple specializations that focus on items that other specializations within the same profession either can't make as well or as many or at all. You can focus on one of these specialization nodes exclusively until you're a super absolute godmaster, or you can specialize into many for the sake of unlocking a bunch of recipes. Now, eventually, and I don't know how long, but eventually you can master every specialization, and that's by using these specialization points. Now, from my testing, they've been found off of, <laughs> they've been found off of all, all sorts of stuff like treasures and rares, and by completing a new crafting recipe for the first time. And, you know, there are tons more sources that I don't fully understand yet. But for a person who puts in just like a handful of hours each week, I'd say that it would still take like many, many months, months to fully max out just one profession. It's not so simple to just say, oh, well, <laughs> that's obviously Blizz making profession leveling slower to increase their slash time played or whatever. Because to be fair, yeah, maxing out profession skills will be like that much slower. What I think is cool though, is that specializations early on, they let you choose which path you want to go down. Profession skill, like the skill levels that we're used to, it's not the same as specializations or specialization points. Like maxing out your skill doesn't mean that you're done. Really, you're just barely getting started. So let's say that I'm a miner. And as a miner, I want to be an efficient draconium mining person because that's where a lot of those high-end blacksmithing recipes need or that's what they need and I'm gonna make tons of money off of that hard to find ore. Or I can focus on efficient tyrovite mining because that's the more plentiful ore and I can increase my chance of getting rare materials and gems off of those things, not to mention selling the ore itself to jewel crafters for prospecting. And speaking of jewel crafting, predictably, there are going to be crafters who are going to focus on, you know, making the best high quality crit gems. But there are also going to be jewel crafters that are focused on just prospecting and obtaining the highest quality gem, or maybe even just the most gems, regardless of quality. What Blizzard is trying to do here is expand the economy by using specializations and quality to create these... <laughs> I guess, sub-markets. Here's another example. Blacksmiths can create really cool and powerful epic gear. And the player or players who gets access to those recipes first with specialization and specialization points will become popular over overnight. To make the most out of that gear though, you've got to have a very special alloy made created with, with these rare and special high quality materials that specialize blacksmiths in another direction, they may be able to produce those far more efficiently. Actually, they may be able to make more money doing that than crafting that high-end gear. So I should talk a little bit about quality because whether you care about quality will influence how you look at your profession and your specializations. So consumables have three levels of quality. Gear has five levels of quality. The quality of your crafted good depends on your profession skill level and the quality of materials used and specialization and, and profession gear, which is, well, which has crafted gear that's also affected by quality. So a piece of gear that has a base item level of 400, I'm making these up. If it has a base item level of 400 or so at quality one, it's gonna have an item level of 410 with max quality, with a quality level of five. If another piece of gear happens to have a base item level of 500 at quality one, it's gonna be 510 at a quality of five. So it's only a 10 item level difference. 
Now that might change in future seasons, but we're just going with what we've got right now. In theory, one player uh, could spec themselves to learn every single plate recipe on the spec map. Like maybe they just want to make whatever anybody wants, even if it's go even if they're going to be stuck at the base item level. And maybe on that person's realm, that happens to be what everyone's looking for, like an epic piece of gear to just get started with. So heck of folks go and do business with that one person. They all get hooked up with epics and that crafter gets rich. But it might also mean that those folks no longer do business with them afterwards because, well, after that, that crafter has nothing left to offer. But hey, dude, there's this other crafter over there who can take everyone's like a plate chest piece and shield and they can make them into a rank five. So now they're making tons of business thanks to recrafting. So when it comes to gear, people may be able to care about quality or, or not. So how much is that? 10 extra item level worth for you to craft or to have crafted. Now there could be a market for both easily. The game is going to be about finding out which kinds of product to offer at what quality and when. It's a little bit different for consumables like potions because well you can't recraft potions and food and whatnot. And as consumables these go on the regional auction house. So what's going to be better in this case? Is it going to be quality? or quantity. Now quality potions need quality materials and at the start of Dragonflight those might be hard to come by. Skill levels are, are going to be lower, specialization points they're going to be few and far between and no one's really established themselves yet. Between alchemists and scribes who make missives for crafted gear it's easy pre to predict a, a very high demand for herbs. Harder to say whether the supply can keep up though. The regional auction house opened at the end of Shadowlands to a very mature market. In Dragonflight though, the regional supply is going to start at zero, so it's very unpredictable. We have no precedent in World of Warcraft to draw on. The only relief that I could offer is that specialization points for any professions don't have to be immediately spent. You can sit on them until you decide to use them. You might find out that there's a high demand for cheaply made leveling gear, which is pretty crazy because with the proper reagents, you can recraft those pieces into starting epics at like 390 something or other. Now that might sell like hotcakes on your particular realm and the tryhards that are racing to make the, the mythic gear stuff, well, they might not care about that market. So suddenly there's a terrific opportunity for you to make a fortune. Here I only showed off a few examples of what you can decide your profession specializations to be. It could be at the gathering level. It could be for getting cloth and making them into bolts. It could be, it could be freaking glass vials that you make for potions. You can spec for even profession equipment that the best crafters will absolutely need in order to make that perfect gear. What the World of Warcraft team did was add so many subcategories and so many facets to crafting that, yeah, a good number of comments down below are gonna say that, hey, cool, Dragonflight is bringing the depth that they've always wanted to have, or that this Dragonflight crafting scheme is like this unplayable time-gated dumpster fire. But maybe in the next video, when I try to rank professions for their profitability, I can get really specific on who I think, not I know, I don't know, but who I think the winners are going to be, why and how. So the rant's over, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.